is a prop. She is the biggest male and female, the biggest college basketball star out there. I also, which is, isn't it weird to say it? Especially during it's taken it. a while because yeah. they're they're like Rebecca Lobo was doing that game right. Last night. By great, the way, great. total shot at Albany at the end of the broadcast. <laughs> yeah, it sounded awkward when yeah. you said it too. Like, I mean, she's, she's, good uh, luck yeah. doing anything at Albany. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. But um, I mean, great, incredible career at UConn. Yep. But just not that. I don't know what it is. We were talking about it at the start of the show today. Good on, good on right. women's collegiate basketball. Like it's been, it's the NIL. It's, it's been the focus. Is it the NIL? Because you know why you're able to now. I think she's in a State Farm commercial. I believe yeah. she's in a Gatorade. They, they, ran, the, yeah. they ran the State Farm during right. the game. She does night. a Gatorade, and without that, you know, without that ability for these athletes to do it, do you want? They wouldn't be. You wouldn't be able to publicize them. As much as you can. I don't know about that, yeah, Wiggy. I'm, I'm not, telling you. I don't, that doesn't. It, no, it's you, more to me about the fact that. What is it? She is the single greatest scorer in college basketball history, yep. both both men and women. Right. The game. I, and again, I, I sound like I, I, I said earlier, I'm going to sound like a rube. But the game is, it seems to me to be as physical as the men's mm-hmm. game. Mm-hmm. Which I don't know that it always was, and I'm probably guilty of not paying enough attention to it. Well, there's always the, been good basketball. Past. I've watched it. You got you brought up Le- Lebecca, uh, Lobo. Rebecca Lobo. There's Diana Taurasi, Subert. So there's always been those players, but they have nil and social media. It, exactly, it takes them to a whole nother level. It make it gives them a market that they didn't have before. But I also think it's a double edged sword because after the game, when they were talking to the LSU players. Angel Reese was in tears, not really about losing the game, but about all the hate she's gotten. And I think at one point she even says uh, the amount of death threats, mm-hmm. um, co- mean comments I've gotten since winning a national championship. Uh, that was the last time I was happy. So mm. to think that you achieved what you've wanted, probably well, why isn't she happy? Well, because she, she won a national championship. Like what? what and and I'm sorry if women want to be treated the same as men. That's what happens in male sports. It's awful. It's the underbelly of society. It's a little bit different in male sports, Curtis, than it is in female How? sports, because the misogynistic aspect to it, the men don't have to deal with. Like, I don't, what are we talking about? It'd be the sexualizing of Angel Reese uh, yeah. because she's in a, a tight dress or a bikini. That's what she's talking about. Right. The way that she's been. I thought she was talking about death threats, like you get death threats from opposing fans. That's that part you. of it. But I'm trying to explain how it could be different for a female athlete than it is a male athlete. And her teammates had her back 100% up on that podium last night. And they were like, you guys don't know Angel. You don't mm-hmm. know who Angel Reese is and the way that she is portrayed in the media or the okay, way. But some of that she brings on herself, right, of course. which is what yeah. Curtis is of, saying. But like, if and she didn't get in the face of Caitlin Clark in the national championship game last year, a lot of the people that have an opinion based solely on that game would be different. Just like somebody in a Super Bowl that makes an ass of themselves, it's from in front of a billion people. It's going to get more people to talk about it than what they really are every day of their life. All I was trying to say is, when it comes to the social media and the NIL deals, while that's great, it's giving them so much money and it's making mm-hmm. them more marketable. It's also bringing a lot more hate to the women's side of the sport that they haven't had to deal with in the past. Right. Well, they, it, it's like it's it is a double edged sword because you utilize your sexuality as a female athlete to be able to garner some financial opportunities, right? So she does the Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Edition, which Mm -hmm. is she knows that it's going to be men are going to be attracted to that. It's no different than the LSU gymnast, right? That comes with, like, if you're going to do that, you know there's going to be some dumbass yeah, dumbass dudes out there that are going to say reckless stuff. And I get the part of it. The death threats, I mean, Curtis is right. That's in all sports. And then you got to understand the world that we're living in today. You have... Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese. And they had their whole thing last year. And one is a black girl and one is a white girl. And one is the white girl is one arguably the best player in college basketball. Right? And so there's always going to be, we see it with white basketball players all the time or just white athletes in general. There's always going to be negativity towards them for them being that great. There's always going to be negativity. In the world we live in, we are divided. So when you, if, when you have these two juggernauts and they have an unbelievable 
uh, championship last year, and then it's the rings, and then it's like, why she got the attitude like this, and that all kind of plays into it, and she brings a lot on herself. She's talking trash. That's the nature of the beast. That's part of the, the world that we live in, and I know that negativity comes with it, but I think what the negativity does sometimes it allows us to see greatness because we now all were tuned in to see the rematch yeah. of this, which ultimately the ratings, I bet, were 10 times better this year than they were They're last gonna year. They're going to be massive. And, 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 Courtney, you were right at the beginning of the show when you said that it was all class, like both sides yeah. during yep. and after, even in the buildup. Angel Reese basically stopped the narrative in its tracks when yep. she said Caitlin and I are friends before the game. Right. And I thought what the conversation, as opposed to last year, has been entirely on the sport, which yeah. is exactly what they should want. And right. it's because both sides played really hard. One team won, and neither team blamed the other. And they turned it down. Even when Angel Reese fouled out, she still handled it with class. Yeah, she right? did. Right? And Caitlin Clark, even though she wanted to gloat, she kept it in. Mm -hmm. And as a couple times, her coach was like, chill out. Because yeah. she wanted to, like, you know, show those emotions. But she handled it with class, knowing, like... If I do this, it goes away from the basketball. And I thought that both teams did a great job when they when it came to that. But like yeah. I already, 603 texter, Courtney, you're 100% wrong. Don't dress like she does if you don't want people to sexualize no, you. See, that's wrong. It, that's wrong. That is like just, a that, woman should be able to wear whatever yeah. the F she wants right. without a guy saying the things that I've looked at her comments. Right. It's right. a dirty, dirty right. place. Those are people that still have them. Though you know who those people are who do the, who put those things up. They're the ones that say you need to be barefoot, pregnant in the kitchen, and black people, you need to be out here picking up my laundry. Those are those type of people. It, Anytime somebody says, "Well, she brings it on herself yeah. because she's, she's wearing, wearing a bikini," stop it. Stop. That's somebody who's a a, a caveman or a cave woman that's living in the 50s that they don't even want to see anybody do anything well. Get out of here with that nonsense. She wants to wear a tight dress. Right. So be it. Yeah. I just am really impressed with the basketball. Yeah. Like, it was it's really... Great. Caitlin Clark is... Right. I, and I assume she's going to go to the, the WNBA. Oh, yeah, yeah. She'll probably be... She, I mean, she got $5 million waiting for Ice Cube. In the big uh, three. From Ice Cube <laughs> in the big three. Yeah. Maybe she'll take that. Yeah, I don't know about that. You know that then that maybe she could play for an NBA team. No. Maybe Caitlin Clark. Can, maybe Caitlin Clark can come to the Echelon Eclipse party next week. Uh, she's good. <laughs> she'll be probably the number one overall pick. But I think you probably she's definitely going to be. Yeah, I mean, I would say she would be. I don't know, like what teams like. Oh, we Shime, want. What's your whatever. WNBA mock draft? Uh, yeah, yeah, her game. Shime. She's got yeah, everything. Yeah, she is that. She's a, 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 arguably a better. I mean, as good of a passer as she is a shooter. Right. I would take her over. I mean, she's uh, awesome. I would take her over Angel Reese. She is the Steph Curry of women's, well, at least we would say college basketball, right? So the, her range is ridiculous. And ho yeah, it's going to be like, Curtis is right, though. With the WNBA, it's an afterthought. You know, so she goes there and she'll probably have a great career, but uh, it's an afterthought. Who's, who's your daddy? Who, who's your, uh, since we're talking about basketball? in the Twitch chat, says that women's college players stay all four years. Yeah. Which allows them to reach that point of recognition yep. that, mm. the 100 men, right. that the men don't get. Because we point. saw this last year, right? We saw this with the... Two of them last yeah. year. And, and Angel yeah. Reese can come back next year if she wants. I, I was also saying to Wiggy during the break that if you go back to 2020 when the women's team started posting the difference between their weight room and the men's weight room or what the merch was that they were mm -hmm. getting during the NCAA tournament, what the men were getting, that I think... It, piqued people's interest. Uh, I think yeah. that got more people to start paying attention to, wait, this is crazy. There are a lot of talented teams uh, on the women's side of things, maybe more than the men's. Why are, why are they treated so differently? I think that was the first kind of push into people paying more attention to, to the female side of March Madness. Yeah, and but I agree with Wiggy that the NIL stuff has elevated yeah. their certainly their recognition. Right, you wouldn't when it comes to who they are. Two years ago, you had no idea who Caitlin Clark was. Right, when Arizona played Stanford in the national championship in the women's national championship in twenty 2020 twenty or twenty twenty one, you had no idea who Caitlin Clark was. Right, and so 
she and she was great her freshman and sophomore year, mm-hmm. but because yeah. of the ability with the NIL, mm-hmm. now she's able to do a lot of things and more people recognize her. And this her. may shift, which I think the ga- biggest game either men or women was last night, but last year's total revenue from the NCAA in men's was $1.2 billion. In women's, it was $2.3 million. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. not that's even like close. A, not yeah. even in yeah. the same stratosphere. Yeah, that's